<laughs> okay, here we go. The next four pieces. Well, it might be five. I'm not sure, but we'll have a go. <laughs> do you like it? One of those, but look at the way they do it. Beautiful. Made of soft rubber. Very nice jawbone. I like that. And um, worked perfectly as a talking puppet. So that was something else I discovered in this um, wonderful 1991, 1991 year. And, and the case, a small, small toy, I call it. But a wonderful animation thing, which I've took to kids' parties and I had a lot of fun with showing it to people. Here's another one, which is very tongue-in-the-cheek. It's um, a life jacket for a golf ball. The Americans are very keen on golf. And this one here is a life jacket for the top floor. You're always hitting balls either into a bunker or into, the, into a nearby pond, aren't you? So it probably it will sink. So you either throw the life jacket in and hope the golf ball's got enough presence of mind to get itself inside, which of course it won't, or just have a laugh and reach in and make it float and then hit it out again with wearing the life jacket out of there. Something to talk about and show at the 19th hole where you discuss, which is the, which is the club bar, of course, after, after a game of golf, where you can discuss and joke things. And that's a particularly nice one of a, of a life jacket for your golf ball. Good one, that. Here's a cute little thing. It's um, the ballpoint pen, but it's got a, it's a, but no, a, it's a pencil rather, not a pen. It's got two ways of going, that way and that way, and something happens both ways. So let's have a go and see if I can make it work. Uh, it, go, it goes like that. Start with. So it's got a, it's actually a pencil. It's one of those ones where you have to push the base and the pencil lead, a tiny one, a Japanese invention this was from the nineteen eighties, slowly advances as you use it up, you just push a bit more in rather than to sharpen it. But when you want to erase something because you made a mistake, you turn it like that and turn it the other way, up comes an eraser. Brilliant. Very, very clever idea that. Very cute. One way a pencil. Cut away an eraser. Very nice design, that. I'm very fond of that one. Here's one I want to do on the table because it's one of these little walking things, but this amused me enormously at the time. It was a very funny thing. It's some. Um, it's a nose, but a wind-up nose. <laughs> Let's make it walk a bit, shall we? Yes, it doesn't walk very far nowadays. It's getting a bit geriatric like me, but it's quite fun. A walking nose, which I've never seen before. If you can get a running nose, that'd be even better, because that's a nice ex double, double expression. So it's trying to be a running nose, but it hasn't quite made it. <laughs> the last item, and I'll leave it down to show this, which is my favourite, I think. This is a superb bit of engineering. Something that um, I picked up when I went back to the East Coast after a long tour of the West Coast to New York and went to um, MoMA, Museum of Modern Art. This is Charles... H. Charles O. Perry, I think it was. It's a, it's a well-known American arti uh, artisan who's been making extremely clever designs. And it's heavy, it's a good paperweight, and it's all made out of bronze or bro uh, bronze pieces. If I push them out like that, up it comes. This top, top one, the, the first one, the key one, has a little um, ball bearing on a spring there, which holds it nicely, firmly in place. But look what happens when you disassemble the thing now. There's the first piece out like that. The other piece is all come out by pushing them. Oops, there's the second piece. This one's got some um, angles to it, so that's going to slide in when it's being assembled. And the next one, stop them coming off. It's got some, um, uh, yes, that's got one as well, but the next one's got two angles, I think it is. Oh no, the last one, that's right. The last one's getting complicated. That's got two angles. So it's got to go one going that way, and another piece going the other way. And the whole thing together is a, a very nice put together puzzle, which I've done pops a dozen times since I bought it in 91, 91 because it's such a, a tactile thing. The pieces are lovely to feel, they're heavy, they're heavy duty, and they're a little bit tricky, but not too tricky. So it won't take you more than two or three minutes, perhaps five minutes if you're feeling lazy. And you end up what is a, a very, very high quality, pleasant looking paperweight. So a brilliant bit of design. It's been available now um, in MoMA. It may, it may, I've seen it even recently for many, many years because it's such a, a nice piece. It was a bit more sort of gold coloured. Perhaps I ought to give it a, a quick clean with some brillo or something to make it look shiny again because the effect when I saw it was stunning and it's probably my best piece of the of that of that year. I think it is. A good time um, in 1991. I did find some good stuff, but I am aware that most of the stuff I've got, which I really appreciate, 
uh, this one um, is small, so I do belong to that small is beautiful uh, philosophy. I think it's a, mostly the small toys are ace. Thank <sweak> you.